Hi my beauties, welcome back to my channel. So today I have my bridal makeup tutorial, which is this look right here. Um, I will say a disclaimer right before we get into the video that I'm not a professional makeup artist. I was never taught at a school or anything. I've been self-taught all my life and this is the techniques that I just personally feel like they work on me and feel like they could work on anyone else. Do feel free to correct me if I'm wrong in anything. I mean honestly this is exactly the makeup that I did on my wedding day and I just loved how it came out. I will say that I was nervous and my hands were like literally shaking while I was doing my whole makeup. I did mess up on my eyeliner. I hope it doesn't really show up on the video or the photos, but I did mess up a little bit. I wish I was as calm as I was today doing my makeup, but overall, I still love my makeup. Everybody was telling me how beautiful I was and I felt so beautiful that day. And thank you so, so much to everyone that congratulated me and gave me your best wishes. Honestly, they went straight to my heart and they... I really appreciate everything. So in this video, I am going to show you my full tutorial of my bridal makeup and as well a little bit of the tips that I did to prepare my skin for the makeup. So that way you guys can get a little bit of update on that. So if you guys would like to see how I got this bridal makeup, then just keep on watching. Okay, my beauties. So the first thing I do want to let you guys know before I start with the whole makeup is you guys should invest in one of these brushes like honestly it's one of the most amazing things you could get this one or either the clarisonic or any other brush but honestly hands down this one is the best in my opinion why because it does the same thing as a clarisonic and you get it for cheaper this one you could get it for 30 dollars if you use my coupon code which is birdie i'll have it written right here on the screen right now it will make your skin a hundred times much better like it honestly will um, start to minimize your appearance of your pores it'll kind of clear out your skin if you're having some problem issues with your skin where it's acting up like pimples and things like that it's gonna get rid of all that piled up makeup inside there because that's what creates the pimples and stuff and of course it's gonna help with scarring so if you have scarring it'll get rid of those dead skin cells this one is called spin for the perfect skin you get it for $30 because normally it runs for I think $100 so it gives you a 70% off with my coupon code. And the cleanser that I use with it is the Purity. I know a lot of people have issues with this so the other cleanser that I recommend is the First Aid Beauty. That one is very very great for gen like for sensitive skin so if you are not comfortable with this I would say use the First Aid Beauty but my skin reacts marvelous with this so definitely recommend it so this is what i just did right now i went ahead and washed my face and then i towel dried it and now i'm going to move into my toner i mean for the longest time i've been talking about this little toner i really don't know what exactly it is but i use it as a toner what this claims to do is it will um, lock in the moisture of your skin so that way it keeps your skin hydrated it clears out any scarring and everything i mean it's just marvelous by far it's uh, like holy water you know because honestly the, every time i recommend this to someone and they use it a week later they're always telling me like thank god for recommending this you know so i definitely recommend it um you do have to buy it on ebay because if not i think mimi box already ran out of it they've been sold out for a while so i just get mine on ebay you get you get three bottles for like $26, I believe. It's very affordable. Um, or if you have somebody in Korea that could get it for you, I would say let them know to get you the Galactomyces Purbis. Amazing stuff, you guys. So then after that, I am going to be using something that I haven't talked about in my channel before. But I've been using the Dermalogica Skin Hydrating Booster. This is a type of serum moisturizer at the same time. It's kind of more on the serum side basically all i do is i drop two drops and i rub it into one side of the cheek and then the other one the same thing on my cheek and i do this this to all my face um basically what this will do is hydrate your skin very well that way you don't have any dry patches when applying your foundation i mean it's just great overall for every skin type i mean it doesn't sting or anything like I said it's just a serum that's gonna work very very great for hydrating your skin and I mean it is this kind it, it says it itself on the bottle skin hydrating booster now the next thing I'm going to do is apply an eye cream you really want to um, hydrate your eyes because you're gonna be applying 
products, you know, on your eyes, like your eyeshadows and eyeliner, everything, you know, lashes. Um, so this is the one I use. This one is called Tibetan Goji Berry. It's an advanced anti-aging eye serum with retinol in it. I love this stuff. I've seen an improvement with my eyes because of this. Sorry about the train, you guys. <laughs> it's going on in the background, but I'm trying to hurry up because I know this video won't be long. Now for my moisturizer, I am going to be using one of my favorite ones and it's new. Like I said, I use this for the daytime, so that's what I'm going to use. And the moisturizer that I'm talking about is this one, the Ember Lease. They sell it at Sephora and I am going to be using the Emolution Hydra Matte. Not the original one because I want my face to look matte. That's why I go with this one. But if you do have very dry skin, I would say go with the original um, and release moisturizer that Beyonce uses. Don't forget about your neck, you guys, because you you guys really do need to moisturize your neck as well. But basically, after that, I am going to wait about 15 minutes for my um, skin to absorb everything. Do not touch your face for the next 15 minutes. Just wait for those 15 minutes and then go ahead and start doing my mirror makeup. So I'll be back in 15 minutes, which right now for you guys will be a second. <laughs> All right, you guys, so it's been 15 minutes already and what I am going to start doing is work on my brows. I'm not gonna work on my face. You first wanna start out with your brows or either your eyes and then move on to your brows. Excuse me. <coughs> It's just personal preference with everyone, either you want to start with your face and then you move on to your eyes. I just say work on your eyes first and then move on to your face because if you have any fallout, you could just easily clean it up and then move on to your face. You don't want to apply your foundation on top of eyeshadow that just fell on your face. That's not going to look cute. So that's what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start out with my brows because I feel like after that I could just use concealer, concealer to clean up around them. And then I could just work on my eyeshadow. So this is the product I'm going to use. Um, I ended up using the Dip Brow Pomade in medium brown. So this is such a great product for your brows because it literally will stay on your brows the whole entire day without moving or anything. And um, I will link this brush down below. It's the Anastasia, I think it's number 18 if I'm not wrong. But I've always used this brush and like i'm not gonna go through with every detail on my brows of how i apply this because i have a full tutorial of my brows so i'm just gonna go ahead and skip right through this okay so now my brows are done and the concealer i actually ended up using to clean up around my edges of my brows is the anastasia concealer in 2.5 this is how it looks like it's a very thick concealer i would never use this for my face it's too heavy i would say um but it's perfect just to clean up around the edges of your brows now the next thing i'm going to do is move on to my eyes so the first thing i'm going to do is prep them and i am going to apply a base this is from mac and it's in the shade soft ochre it's a pro longer paint pot for this you can use any brush i am going to be using the sigma p84 brush um Basically, it's not even meant for this, but I like it, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply this. What I like about these paint pots is that it really grabs onto the color very well. It honestly doesn't even make them crease up or make them move or anything. It really keeps it in place. And I'm actually going to bring this right under my eye because we do apply eyeshadow there. Now that the eyes are prepped, I am going to start moving into my eyeshadows. So the first thing I am going to do is start on my crease. I never start anywhere else. Um, believe it or not, that day I was so nervous that I didn't know what to do. What was the first step or anything? So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a Sigma E40 blending brush. This is hands down a brush that everyone needs in their makeup kit. Even if you're not a professional makeup artist or anything, Hands down, this is a brush that everybody must have. So the first shade I'm going to go in is Creme Brulee and Peach Smoothie. I'm going to combine these two together and apply this on my crease. I am going to blend this on my crease from inner corner to all the way to my outer corner. Flickering it up a little bit, creating that little edge because obviously I am going to do a winged liner so it complements it. And you want to also blend this in like windshield wiper motions it really does help blend out the color very beautiful basically you want to apply a transition color when doing your bridal makeup you are going to be applying other colors on there so this is just going to help out the process of blending out the colors together beautiful so once you are done applying your transition shade we are going to move on to the next color now in that day that i was doing my makeup i did the mistake of right away putting on my eyelid color without noticing 
Jasmine, what are you doing? But I was so nervous that day that I totally forgot. The next step that you should take is grab a darker color. My favorite one is Coco Bear. So I'm going to take a little bit of this on my brush. And I am going to use this E25 blending brush. It's very great to precise your crease. And basically, I am going to concentrate this on my crease very slowly, building up the color. You just very want to slowly intensify the crease. Like so. And again, just on the outer edge, kind of flicker it up a little bit. Once you have built this intensity, you are then going to drag it down to your outer part of your eye, creating a little V shape. And I mean, this is just going to help out blend the black eyeshadow that we're about to apply. You don't necessarily have to use black if you don't want to. I just really wanted my eyes to be very dramatic and besides my whole theme was black and white so i thought it was a must to wear black on the outer part of my eye and i am going to be using makeup geek color in corrupt because it's the blackest eyeshadow i've ever used so i'm going to be using this black eyeshadow and the brush i used that day to apply it on my outer part of my eye was the sigma e55 eye shading brush we're going to be starting to apply this very gently and building up the color so I'm going to just start popping this in here. And as you guys can tell, I'm kind of like just not laying it flat completely, just a tiny bit. Just because I want to be careful of how much I am going to be applying on the outer part of my eye. And again, creating a little V shape. And it's, a, it's okay if it's messy at first. Don't be so dramatic on like, oh my god, it's not creating a V-shape. Because we're going to blend it out right now. So it's okay if it's not like that V-shape that you want. Just try your best. Now that we got the black eyeshadow down, we are going to start blending it out. And we're going to be using our E25 blending brush. Now, I am going to actually grab Cocoa Bear. Just a tiny bit, like the tiniest amount on your brush. And what you're going to do is just blend this out on your crease first. So just go ahead and pretend you're building that intensity again in your crease. For reality, you're just blending out the black eyeshadow. And just take your time. You could be here hours if you want. But just make sure that it's very well blended out. And try not to bring this color in all the way to your inner corner because then it's going to create this like hooded eye effect which you don't really want. You want your eyes to be very opened up. As far as this outer corner, that doesn't really matter because you will be applying your winged eyeliner there. So don't be scared that, oh my God, did I blend that outer part? Like, no. The only thing that you have to worry about is your crease right now. And then right now we're going to start moving on to blending out the actual color in our lid. So you just put the little tiny bit that you have of the cocoa bear on there. Just kind of slightly sweep it away from your eyelid That's that you haven't applied eyeshadow. You don't want to go in because it's not, if not you're going to mess up the whole thing. Um, but you want to just uh, blend it out outwards. And once you apply your other eyeshadow... It's going to create this beautiful effect. Um, right now, I know it does not look like it's coming together. But trust me, once you apply the other eyeshadow, it'll look flawless. That's enough blending for right now. Now I'm going to grab a Sigma E35 Taper Blending Brush. And you're just going to uh, blend this out on your crease. Just to kind of create, diffuse that color more into your brow bone I was not trying at all going going for a very soft natural smoky eye no no I wanted something very dramatic so now for my lid I am going to be using a foiled eyeshadow and this foiled eyeshadow is like the most beautiful thing ever. It's called In the Spotlight and it's from Makeup Geek. Now this one in particular, I know it looks kind of like orangey in my opinion, but it's not. It It's very, very beautiful. And I'm going to be applying this with a for large shader brush. It's the E60. And I have to grab my MAC Fix Plus. You hands down have to grab this to make the color very, very pop. So I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit on my brush. Just a few sprints 
And then I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush into that color. So that way you guys can see the effect that it does. If you guys wanted um, something different, not um, foiled eyeshadow, you could use a very shimmery eyeshadow. And the one I definitely recommend is Shimmer Shimmer by Makeup Geek. That one is such a beautiful color as well. But like I said, I wanted something a little bit more dramatic. So I went with a foiled eyeshadow. Uh, if you want something that's not super shimmery, but still yet very beautiful and very, very subtle with a little bit of shimmer in it, I would go with Anastasia Beverly Hills Single Eyeshadow in the color Blink. That one's very beautiful, but it's very natural um, in my opinion. So I didn't really like that. Now that we got that down, now we are going to grab our Sigma E20, E35 I mean. And go ahead and grab a little bit of creme brulee, just a tiny bit. And then just blend one more time the crease area. Just to make sure that everything's very diffused. Make sure everything is very, very well blended out right now. Because right now we're going to go into our lid. Now grabbing your E25, we're going to grab a little bit of the Cocoa Bear again. And just lightly apply this where the two colors meet up, the shimmery one and the metallic eyeshadow one and the black eyeshadow. And again, blending outward, not inward, if that makes sense. I hope I'm saying all this right. And if you feel like you have to go back into your metallic eyeshadow, go ahead and reapply it. So that's as far as the eyeshadows goes. Now I'm going to move on to my eyeliner. The eyeliner that I recommend, I do not recommend the angle one. That one is very slippery and you could get messy. And knowing me how what I went through, my hand was shaking. So the eyeliner that I hands down recommend is the Sigma Gelled Liner in the color Wicked. This is super, super black and it's very, very great. The It's... It just really works on the way that you apply it on your eye. I mean, it just works so amazing. And the brush I'm going to be using is a Zoeva 317. I did not mean to use this brush that day, but I was just so nervous and trying to hurry up that I just grabbed it. But if I could have, I would have used another brush. So I'm going to still use this brush just because I did use it and I don't want to switch the way that I did my makeup that day. So I'm going to go ahead and just wing out my liner. And later on, it does not matter how ugly this gets right now because we're going to go in there with our liquid eyeliner and perfect everything. So can you guys see how retarded this looks? Like it honestly looked like a three-year-old just went on my eye right now and just drew this line. Like I said, I don't find this to be the best brush, but just use a good eyeliner. So like I said, it could be very messy. It, you don't have to make sure that it's super perfect or that the lines are very straight. But you do want to make sure that you fill it in with the black gel liner. I feel like if I use another brush, it will be so much better. But what can I say? I was so nervous that day. Okay, now going in with the NYC Liquid Eyeliner, we're going to go ahead and start lining our eyes. We're going to perfect it. And this is the part where I struggled that day because my hand would not stop shaking. But look how straight that looks now. Like that bottom line. I mean, it, it, the NYC Liquid Eyeliner, I swear, is like my best friend. I love it so much and I very well recommend it to everyone. Now the next thing we're going to do is use a little bit of concealer just to clean up around the edge of our line. That way it looks very sharp. And I am using the concealer F70 brush to clean up. Now that we got the eyeliner down, we're going to move on to our lashes and the thing i'm going to do to prepare them is use my mascara this is the l'oreal voluminous carbon black mascara i'm going to apply a few coats of this and you really have to do this that way your real lashes blend with your 
falsies. The lashes I did use up that day were the House of Lashes in the style iconic. Most beautiful lashes ever. I mean, I love them so much and I just feel like they really complement my eyes. So these are the ones that I'm going to pop. Like I said, I do also have another tutorial for how you apply false lashes. So I will link that down below. Okay, so now I have my lashes on and I really like these lashes because they're very complement. They complement so well the winged liner and I mean, I just love it. Okay, so now we are going to move on to our face. So what I am going to be using to prime my face is the Benefit Professional. I love my Smashbox, don't get me wrong. It's very nice, but this one from Benefit really will help control oil. And I don't think the Smashbox does that very well. So that's why I just can't stay away from this one, you guys. Like, I really love it. Okay, for foundation, I am going to be using two of them. I couldn't decide between them. I really wanted to use both of them. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to use both of them. So the ones I ended up using that day was the Estee Lauder, Estee Lauder Double Wear and a little tiny bit of this one. I just really wanted to use this one because it... I'm, I'm going to be hugging everybody that day. I knew that I was going to have a white dress on. Um, my theme was black and white. Everybody was wearing black and white. Mostly the girls were wearing white, you know. So I didn't want to see my makeup on their shirts or dresses and stuff. So I didn't want that. So what I did first, I shake this up. I dot it on. And they both oxidized a little bit. So I didn't have a problem with that. I mean... I knew that it was going to work out at the end. And now with this one, like I said, I'm just going to grab a very tiny bit amount of it. So this one, I'm going to put it in the back of my hand. And now what I'm going to do is grab my sponge. And it has to be damp, you guys. Um, and I'm actually going to put it all over this. And then with this, I'm just going to go ahead and blend it all out. And I have to work a little bit fast because, like I said, the LC Cosmetics Foundation... Um, sets right away so basically this is all i did i kind of just went all over my face and it gives me this flawless full coverage foundation that i really wanted on that day and on top of that it stayed on in place it stayed in place the whole day like i didn't have to worry about touching up and i was actually very surprised after i saw myself like after a few hours my face was like exactly how i just had applied my foundation and Okay, now I have my whole base, and now we're going to move on to concealer. So for my concealer, I use the MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. I mix two shades. I use the NC25 and NC20 to get that perfect shade that I want. I'm actually going to apply this underneath my eyes like this in a little triangle shape. And then I'm going to apply a little bit here and then down the bridge of my nose into my forehead. You could apply as much or as less as you want. Um, you don't necessarily have to apply this much concealer, but I do because I have really bad eye circles. And I am actually uh, using this technique just to also conceal and brighten. So, just in case you guys think it's too much, it's not, <laughs> in my opinion. Okay, after that, now we're going to contour. And what I used that day was the Anastasia Beverly Hills Contour Kit. And I'm going to take the color Java. It's a very cool tone shade, but it's perfect because you do want to make that appear like it's a very, like your natural contour or whatever you want to call it. So it creates a little shadow. So I am using the Eda brush and I'm gently going to do this. Don't want it so harsh because we are going to go in there with a little bit of bronzer right now. But just a tiny bit, just to carve it out. As you guys can see... I just made this cheekbone pop up. So that's mainly what I wanted to do with this shade. Not really bronze up with this color because like I said, it's a cool tone. Just a tiny bit on your nose. Not so dramatic, just enough to give it a dimension. So now with my bronzer, my Too Faced bronzer, my holy girl bronzer that I love so, so, so much. As you guys can tell, I really love this bronzer. I'm going to take my Zoeva 128 brush and swirl it in here tap the excess and then just apply a tiny bit just to blend out that color and then i'm going to apply some on the hollows of my forehead 
So then we're gonna move on to blush. So for blush, I use the Sigma Heavenly Powder Blush and with a cream fo5 brush which is my favorite one to apply because it really gets in there into the apples of your cheeks so i'm going to go ahead and just pack this on the brush then tap off the excess and then just lightly swirl this on the apples of your cheeks and then gently sweep it back and I mean, it's just going to go with any lipstick that you want. So that's why I really love it. Okay, so now with my 125 Stippling Zoeva brush, I'm going to take this and then just make sure everything is well blended out before I go in there with my powder. A lot of you say that I'm very harsh with my blush or my bronzer, I mean. But I'm not. Like in person, everything looks good. It's just like I also see that in camera. It looks... A little too intense i don't know if it's because of my contrast settings or something but i swear to you guys like i'm not that dramatic with my makeup in person <laughs> now we have the cheekbones and the blush and everything perfect so now i'm going to take my banana powder this is a powder that oh my god it's so amazing and everybody loves as well that every time I try it on a client, everybody's just like, wow. Um, it's very, very nice. I am going to use the setting brush by Real Techniques. And I am going to take a very generous amount, as you guys can tell. I'm not even going to tap this excess off. Um, and I'm just going to lay this on the bottom of my eye. Like this. And you guys are probably going to think, like, what the heck is she doing? But I saw this technique somewhere. I forgot where. I think it was on Instagram. And I tried it a few days before the wedding. And this is really cool. They say it's like the technique that's called um, the baking, I believe. You just let it sit here for a few seconds. I'm actually going to do this all over my face wherever I applied the, my concealer because um, I found that it really made my concealer stay in place all day. Okay, now with the stippling brush again, I'm just going to sweep this off. It's supposed to help with your bronzer and setting everything. Um, I don't know if it really is such an amazing technique, but I find that it makes my contour even better. Some people think it's a little too harsh. I mean, I was not trying to do anything, like I said, soft or natural. Or I just really wanted something very dramatic. So now with my E30 pencil brush, I'm going to dip this into um, Cocoa Bear. And I'm going to apply this on my lower lash line. And this is the Sigma E30, like I said. And this is another brush that everybody needs. The E30 is a really great brush for this because it really gets in there. And it doesn't extend the eyeshadow all the way out as if you just got hit by a ball or something. Or punched in the eye. It just creates the most beautiful effect under your eye the tiny tiny bit like the tiniest bit that you can grabbing the black eyeshadow like literally i'm just going to like i mean it's not even a lot like and i'm still going to tap off the excess um apply this right on top of cocoa bear just so it could blend with your crease Now that we have that down, I am going to take L'Oreal Smoldering Black Eyeliner. Like, this stuff is amazing. And I cried and it didn't even smear or anything. Like, it just stays so perfectly in there. I mean, I just really love it. It's super black as well. And then I use a brush to get in there because I don't want to touch my face. And this is a technique that I just learned from Amanda Enzing. Um, I saw her do it and I was like, oh my gosh, she's so genius. <laughs> Now to finish off the bottom lashes, um, I'm going to use this mascara. This mascara is from Baletto Studio. It's the Volume Mascara. I really love it. It's very great for the bottom lashes because it's, you guys can tell by the wand, it's very thin. It's not super thick or anything. So it's just perfect just to get in there. 
without having to mess up the eyeshadow or ruin your concealer or anything. Now that the bottom lashes are done, I'm going to take Ice Queen by Makeup Geek and I'm going to apply this on my brow bone just to give me that highlighted effect. And then just pop this right on my brow bone. Type out the excess all the time, you guys. I keep forgetting to say that, but just do it. It's going to help with applying your eyeshadow. You could add this to the inner corner of your eyes, like right in here, but I totally skipped it, so I'm not even going to apply that. But if I would have remembered, I would have applied it there, but just to let you know how I did my makeup, I didn't apply anything in there. I just left it blank, to be honest. So that's pretty much all I did. So this is how the eyes look after they are done. I mean... This is everything I always wanted. <laughs> Originally, I was always waiting for the Anastasia Beverly Hills liquid lipstick in the color Hollywood, which is here. Let me tell you guys a funny story. This thing came the day of my wedding, but I did not go... I didn't go to my mailbox to go get it because obviously I'm trying to hurry up. I was running late and... Everything got crazy, but this was originally the lipstick that I wanted to wear and I am going to wear it today because I do feel like this is what the, you need to wear on that day. It's a liquid lipstick that's going to last you the whole entire night. I already wore it yesterday, the whole day. Oh my god, you guys, it's like the most beautiful thing. I will say that it does dehydrate your lips a little bit. But if you're applying a lip gloss on top, you'll be good for the whole day. So this is the actual thing I'm going to use today. What I did use that other day was the Dose of Colors... What was it? It was a Dose of Colors lipstick, and then I applied my Gerard Cosmetics Shimmer of Hope. If you want to add a little bit of color to it, I would say add a lip gloss. It could either be brown or pink or coral, whatever you decide. I mean, with this eye look, really you could pull off any lipstick you could wear red you could wear a purple one a very bright pink one honestly any lipstick will do so yeah this is pretty much it now for the final touch i'm going to add my urban decay to slick makeup setting spray this is my favorite one from all of them i just really like this one because it really does control your oil and at the same time keeps your makeup in place so i'm gonna go ahead and spray a little bit of this <laughs> i forgot totally completely about the highlighter this is the one I use. It's the Bobbi Brown Shimmer Brick um, in the color beige. I honestly love this. And I'm just going to apply just a tiny bit because I didn't even really apply a lot. I just wanted just a tiny bit. That's all I wanted. I mean, I didn't even apply it down the bridge of my nose or anything. I honestly, like I said, I was so nervous that day. But this is what pretty much I just had to add before I added my makeup setting spray. So I went ahead and added my earrings that I wore that day. I honestly think they're like the most beautiful earrings I've ever seen. And when I saw them um, in Los Angeles, I just thought they were like the perfect earrings for my wedding day. Um, but yeah, this is the final look, you guys. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. You guys will help me so much if you guys do. And if you're not subscribed to my channel, don't forget to click the subscribe button. That way you're up with all my videos and everything else and also stay tuned for my wedding video it will be up very soon it will be up in a couple weeks just have patience i really do want the person that um videotaped everything to edit it very well so that we guys can enjoy it and yeah so with that my loves i will see you guys all in my next video bye Mwah.